Yes, smoking is a terrible habit and I tried to stop, but Chantix kind of made me go a little crazy. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And welcome back to another video. My channel is all about mental health and this is a video I've been meaning to make for about a year. Yeah, it's been about a year since I tried using Chantix. And like, this is a mental health topic, okay? And you'll, you'll understand why when I explain why I stopped taking Chantix, all right? So, I'm a smoker, it's terrible. Like, I know it's bad for me. And like, some of you who are familiar with me and my story and my channel, like, I am a drug addict and alcoholic in recovery. Like, I often joke with my clients about why the D.A.R.E. program didn't work. Like, did any heroin addict not know that heroin was bad for them? Of course they did. Do any smokers not know that smoking is bad for them? Of course they do, like I know. I know smoking's bad for me. Like my doctor like even talks to me, they're like, yeah, I know you know smoking's bad, so I'm not gonna lay into you about it, you know, but she gives me some options and things like that. But honestly, like, I, my struggle with smoking, uh, a lot of it's been, you know, just recovering from addiction and it's, it's an excuse. Like, I know it's terrible and some of you watched my video about how I lost weight and things like that. Like, it's something that I'm working on. Like, I feel guilty about it. I feel terrible about it. Like, almost every time I pick up and light a cigarette, I feel guilty. Regardless of what my girlfriend thinks, I don't know if she's watching this, but if you are, you're beautiful. But uh, yeah, she wants me to quit smoking. But like, I feel awful every time I do it. Like, I know I'm doing something bad that's harming me, you know, and things like that. So like, it's something that I wanna stop doing. And I think as an addict in recovery, it's this justification. Like, I'm very self-aware that it is a justification. Like, a common excuse that you hear from a lot of addicts, and I'm one of them, is like, I quit using drugs and alcohol leave me alone, let me have this, right? Like it doesn't change the fact that it's bad. So I beat myself up about it too, like I quit alcohol and drugs. Like if any of you are not living under a rock, you know that there is this crazy addiction epidemic. Tens of thousands of people are dying each year. Even more people are overdosing and surviving. There are so many people who are addicts or alcoholics and they can't quit. I am one of the few and it's nothing, you know, to boast my own ego, but I overcame a drug addiction and alcoholism. It is is one of the hardest things to do, but I can't quit smoking, you know? So I got to a point last year where like, I, I finally admit defeat, you know? I keep trying to do things my own way and stuff like that. And finally I'm like, you know what? I need help. Like I couldn't quit smoking. I need help. So I got the idea to try Chantix, all right? So there's a story I won't dive into, but the only person I knew who used Chantix was this guy I used to work with like 10 years ago, and he lost his mind on it. He lost his mind, so I was, I've been afraid of using Chantix. So like I got the idea, but I'm like, man, that dude like flew off the rails. Like I watched his mental breakdown, and he was a coworker. Like he had this episode at work, like it was nuts, right? So I was talking to my girlfriend about it. I said, I want to try Chantix to quit smoking, but I'm afraid I'll lose my mind. And my, my girlfriend, uh, you know, she's gone to school for psychology and she, she was more well-versed on this subject than me. I forgot what she said and she's not in the room right now, but like she said like, you know, when they talk about Chantix and saying that, you know, there's psychological side effects, like they have to warn you about that. Even if like something really low, like, one to three percent, I think the number was. Like, if one to three percent of people experience these psychological side effects, they have to list them. So when she said that, I'm like, okay, so there's a very low chance that all have psychological side effects. So I do wanna preface it with saying this first. When I got on Chantex, okay, because I'm not saying that you shouldn't try Chantix if you're trying to quit smoking. I think when I tried it, it was just the perfect storm for bad things to happen. So at this time, this was another time in my history where I quit taking my anti-anxiety medication, Lexapro, and my doctor had helped me wean off of it, and when I followed up with her about coming off of my Lexapro, that's when I talked to her about Chantix. So I got off of my mental health medications and got on a new medication that has a possibility of psychological effects. You know what I mean? Like negative effects. So I think that was one of the prime factors, okay? But I mentioned this in my video about getting off my meds and something I, that I do. I let people know. 
I let people know like, hey, if I start acting crazy, if I start acting nuts, I need you to tell me because I won't realize it. So, I started taking Chantix, and if any of you haven't tried it before, like basically they give you like this kit, right? And you start out by taking a certain dose per day and it gradually goes up, and you don't actually quit smoking while you're doing it. Like, it's supposed to diminish cravings and things like that, but you can still smoke, right? But you're supposed to kind of wean off your smoking and the cravings are supposed to go away. Well, I wasn't really doing that, I was still smoking just as much. Um, one of the side effects that really hit me too was I was constantly tired, I was very drowsy on it, and it's kind of just the give and take that I took, like okay, I'm quitting smoking, but I'm really tired. And like with most medications, you're supposed to be on them for a couple weeks for your body to adjust, so I was hoping that would go away. So I just kept using it, kept using it, but I kept smoking too. And that's when I started to have uh, mental health issues, and I didn't realize it. Um, one of the things was, was just like this immense depression. And my depression works in a way of not only hopelessness, but I beat myself up. I've mentioned this in other videos. I beat myself up. And like, I was just, had so much negative self-talk about, geez, Chris, like you can't even quit smoking with a medication. And I was just ripping into myself. Like I felt like a piece of garbage, you know? And people are asking me, how's the Chantix going? Did you quit yet? Did you quit smoking yet? And the answer is like, no, no, I haven't. And like, I felt awful about that. Well, then my anxiety starts coming, right? It starts coming back and I'm meditating and things like that. But I just had this racing brain, negative thoughts and all sorts of stuff. And I was getting very irritable too. When my anxiety comes back and my depression hits in, like one of my characteristics is I get very irritable, I get angry, I get snappy and stuff. And that's why I tell people to let me know if I start acting abnormal. So my girlfriend mentioned it, you know, and I, I brushed it off because I was just in a bad mood. And what happened was, I'll never forget, I'll never forget. I was in the car with my son and we were going through a drive-through and my son was talking, my brain's racing, I'm feeling anxious, I'm feeling crazy and I'm sitting there and like this thought came in my head and it was like, you know what Chris? Maybe you should go get some drugs because those will ca probably calm you down. And right then it was just like this, I was like, oh my God. Like I haven't really thought like like seriously about using in many years. You know what I mean? Like I just celebrated six years clean, but this thought sounded so good to me in that moment, it scared the bejesus out of me. I'm like, this is not okay. And when that happened, like thank God I was able to recognize it. Like when that happened, I, I sat down and I just, and this is what I recommend to all of you when you have like a mental like snap or whatever, like sit down and just, you gotta play detective with your life because everything was so foggy and my brain was going a million miles a minute for weeks on end. I was like, what's different? What's going on in my life that's different? And it took me a while to sit there and analyze it. And then it finally came to me. I'm like, oh, I'm taking Chantix. Maybe I'm having these psychological side effects, right? Oh. I'm not taking my anxiety meds anymore. And they're also antidepressants. Maybe this has something to do with it. So I took the rest of my Chantix and I threw it away. I went to the pharmacy, I refilled my Lexapro prescription and I got back on track, okay? So I just kept taking my meds, stopped using Chantix. So that's kind of what happened to me. Again, like I don't, I don't wanna veer anybody away from the idea of using Chantix. Like I might be one of those you know, few percentile of the people who had a negative side effect. It might help you. I know there's success stories. It's, this is just my personal experience. So I hope you're a little bit more educated about it and you can make a decision. Like smoking's terrible and like, man, I, I wanna quit, I need to quit. And like where I'm at with it today, Honestly, that last experience with qu trying to quit like really shook me up and I know I use it as an excuse and it's not a great one, but I'm afraid to try again. I'm afraid to try again because I'm afraid that if I let go of smoking, it's gonna make me wanna drink or use again and, and that's probably dumb, it's probably an irrational fear and it's good and therapeutic that I'm talking about it with all of you. Like, it's something I need to work on, you know, whatever the case may be, whether it's switching to a vape and weaning down from there, I, I, don't, I don't know. If you, if you have suggestions, 
suggestions, if you've quit smoking, leave your suggestions down below. I've tried, you know, meditation and mindfulness. I know it helps. I know I can do it, but like, I don't know, I'm afraid to. I'm afraid to because it's just something I do, it's something I, I use to also relieve stress and it's terrible. I'm just a guy babbling on about excuses now. It's awful, there's no excuse to smoke. There's not an excuse to smoke. I'm awful, I'm awful, but I love all of you and I know you love me. So <laughs> this video got really weird. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wrap this thing up. So anyways, if you somehow like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, I'm always making videos to hopefully help you out with your mental health. Click that little round subscribe button and a big, big, big thank you to everybody supporting me on Patreon. And if you would like to support what I'm doing, trying to help people with their mental health, you can click or tap on the little Patreon icon right there. All right, so thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you next time.